Let me tell you that nothing, absolutely nothing has been harder than trying to preach this message today. Every demon in hell has tried to stop it. Every satanic movement has tried to bring a stop to it. You see, every Christian is a priest and we have a high priest who sits in the third heaven at the right hand of Father. This high priest we have is no ring-kissing, wine-drinking, merry-worshipping, defiled human. He is a holy, blameless, sinless high priest and his name is Jesus Christ. He doesn't wear dresses. He doesn't have a hat that represents the fish god Dagon and he doesn't cover up pedophilia. He doesn't pray to the dead, play with rosary beads or wear a cross around his neck. He had no time for pagan Rome who beat him, stabbed him, cut him and crucified him then and he has no time for Rome now. I guarantee you that. I want you to have a think of the local priest you know and tell me whether he meets the qualifications of being a high priest. 1 Timothy 3, 1, 7 This is a true saying. If a man desires the office of bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop must be then blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, vigilant, sober of good behaviour, given to hospitality and apt to teach. He must, according to our Lord, not given to wine, a striker, not greedy or filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well with his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man not know how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of that church of God? He must not be, according to verse 6, not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. My friends, I, I wonder today whether that represents the local priest. But why am I writing this message? Why? Because up until the turn of the century, Protestants, the Baptists, Methodists, Anglicans, the Reformed Church, preached weekly against the whore of Babylon and its demonic leader, the Pope. Up until a century ago, you couldn't walk past a church without hearing an old Bible-believing, gospel-spruiking pastor whose knees were worn out from hours of praying, speaking out against her up to the early 1900s, the church's creed declared that the Pope was the Antichrist. Everything that Calvin, everything that Luther, everything that Jonathan Edwards had revealed to us was being preached. I want to make this very clear. I am not, and I repeat, not, here to spread a hate message against the Catholics. It's the furthest thing that I want to do. I want to see the Catholics one to Jesus Christ. So what am I here to, to do? What is it that I'm here to do? It's to expose the most vulgar, the most demonic, the most satanic church hierarchy that exists. A church that is the Roman Catholic Church. So why do I oppose this mega church, this machine, this cult the Bible calls the Whore of Babylon? Turn with me to 1 Timothy 3, 1 to 7 again, and let's just find out. The Bible makes it very clear that a priest should be everything in that portion of Scripture. Matthew 23, 9 makes it very clear that no man is to be called father. The word Pope comes from the word Paps, or Papa, which means father. Now that's the exact name the Lord Jesus banned in Matthew 23, Verse 9, the Catholic priest is never a pastor. He has no family, he has no wife, he certainly doesn't feed the word of God to the flock and the one he claims to be in succession to, the Apostle Peter, he denies his very teaching. Peter would never let a man bow down to him as seen in Acts 15, 11 and 10, 25. As for the Pope, with all his speeches on TV, speaking ex cathedra, how many Bible verses have you heard him speak? I guarantee never once have you heard a New Testament plan for salvation. Why? Because he doesn't believe in it. 
Let me say that again. He doesn't believe in the New Testament plan for salvation. What does he believe? Well, he believes that you ain't got to make salvation unless you base it on faith in the Catholic machine. If you believe in salvation, then you are cursed, anathema. I challenge you to find me one plan of salvation spoken by them in the last hundred years. When you see them on TV, you will never hear them speak about the plan of salvation. Oh, you'll hear unity, you'll hear world peace, you'll hear love, but you won't hear on the grandest stage of them all, in front of millions and millions of people, the way of salvation. And with the 65 to 100 million Christians, let me say that again, church, with the 100 million Christians they have slaughtered over the last 1,700 years as a church, you'd think that they'd have a plan for salvation. Oh, you don't believe me? I suggest you read Fox's Book of Martyrs. Read your history. Read about the Crusades, the St. Bartholomew Massacre, the Salem Witch Trials, the Spanish Inquisition, etc., etc., etc. The Pope claims to be Jesus' authority here on earth. No Pope in history, not one Pope in history, ever resembled the Lord Jesus or Paul or Peter. Every time I hear the Pope, all I hear is pious phrases that will tickle the religious ear. Pray for world peace, man's inhumanity to man. I tell you, I would preach and quote more Bible in a week than this Antichrist, this one world religion leader would in his lifetime. Church, you don't need Mary to get into heaven. Why am I so hard on the Catholic Church? Because you put any bishop any nun, any priest, any vicar up against the New Testament and you'll find that they're chalk and cheese. There is no way known I'd call a whiskey drinking, child molesting, Babylon worshipping, merry following, wine guzzling, flock abusing, politician, my pastor. There is no way known. I couldn't walk into a Catholic church and take communion with other confirmed Roman Catholic murderers like John Gotti, Adolf Hitler, Fidel Castro, Mussolini, the New York Ma Mafia, Heinrich Himmler and about 5,000 others of history's worst mass murderers and killers. I, I could no more do that than... I, I, there is no way known I could do that. I'd have to throw up there and then on the spot. You see, all these murderers love to pray. They love to pray, church. They are convinced by their Pope and by their priest that they can do what they want when they want it, confess it, hail Mary, pay some money, tickle their ears or whatever they do, and they'll be forgiven. You can know and read and believe in the New Testament. Let me say that again. You can't know and read and believe in the New Testament and stay in Catholicism. It's impossible. That's why they hated the great John Wycliffe so much. That's why after they, they missed their chance to kill him in 1380 because he had already died, the Pope ordered his corpse to be dug up out of the ground and mutilated because he changed the Christian world by giving a Bible the average, to the average man so he could read it himself. No longer did they have to rely on the priest to translate the lies from the Latin Vulgate. And then they tried to get every copy that Wycliffe wrote by hand and burn it. That's what Luther's Reformation was born out of. But don't be surprised at that you read your history. The Catholic Church has been murdering, burning alive, torturing, raping, killing at the stake, stretching people in stretch machines till they snapped in half, mostly all Christians since AD 300, between 65 and 100 million of them. If you lined up a priest with one Timothy, you would run out of that church as fast as you possibly could. The original Pope, so they claim, was the Apostle Peter. They claim that the Apostle Peter was the original Pope, but he was married with children. That shows me just how much of a joke these Popes are. Have a look at 1 Timothy 5.17. Another reason I'm against the Catholic Church, the whole hellish, godless setup from Mass to rotary, Rosary beads and crosses is that it finds its roots in heathen origin, from the worship of Nimrod, Tamils and Astarch. No Roman Catholic nun or priest or bishop or pope will ever teach you these facts. And then there's Mary. The Mary they worship never was and never has been and never will be the Mary of the Bible. 
Let me repeat that so it goes into your ears. The Mary that the Catholic Church worships never has been, never will be, and never was the Mary of the Bible. I'll tell you it is. They'll make you believe it is, but it's not. Even if it was Mary, Mary was never immaculate. Mary was never our gateway to God. Mary was never our Redeemer. That's what they like. That, that, that's why they like to keep Jesus as a baby, little baby Jesus, meek and mild, and Mary as a saviour, holding on to him. It's a doctrine from hell. Luke one forty seven says Mary was a sinner. Luke two twenty two says she needed cleansing. Mark six thirty three she was not a virgin all her life. She had six other children. They were Jesus' brothers and sisters, not his cousins, as they want you to believe. They were never his cousins. They were his brothers and his sisters. The Catholic Church tries to portray Mary as infallible, who never makes a mistake. But in Luke eleven twenty seven to 28, Matthew twelve fifty six, Jesus told Mary she didn't know what she was talking about. The doctrine of Mary was brought in by another Antichrist, wine-guzzling, child molesting Pope in 450 AD, Pope Leo. Let me make this very clear, Church. The Mary that the Catholics worship is not the Mary of the Bible. They'd like to convince you it is. They'd like you to believe she is omnipresent, just like God. The Catholic Church will tell you she is a perpetual virgin, just like her husband Joseph. They have given her the mantle of sinlessness, just like Jesus. How much more blasphemy do you have to hear before you realise that this is not our sister church? They have made her an omnipresent goddess that can hear the confessions of over one billion Catholic sinners and take their sins away. When Catholics pray to Mary, they are praying to a female demon. When they bow down and pray to this demon statue, they are breaking everything in God's book. They are breaking every rule. They are breaking every law. They have taken Luke one twenty eight and blasphemed it. You see, a demonic spirit's favourite pastime is making a person feel religious. Look at Matthew fifteen eight to 9 Catholic paintings of Mary portray her as a strong, mighty woman and as Jesus as a healthy, wimpy little baby. Now, the Catholics will tell you that they don't worship Mary. They'll tell you that they don't, but that is just more deceit and more lies. They declare that Mary is co-equal with Jesus and that she is the mother of God. But you've got to understand that the Mary the Catholic Church worship is not the Mary of the Bible. She is the ancient goddess mother, Ceramius, with her child Tamaz. In Chinese mythology, she is known as Shinagamu. She is always pictured with a child in her arms with rays around her head, the ancient Germans knew her as Hertna, with baby in arms. The Scandinavians called her Dissa, who also had baby in arms. The Druids, the most evil of all people, worshipped the same demon god called Virgo Parachula. If you go to India, she is known as Indari. In Greek mythology, she is known as Aphrodite. To the pagans in Rome, and to this day, she is known as Mary. She also is known as Venus, goddess of love. She has been around for years and years and years, church. They worship her, and they will deny that they ever worship her, but that is a lie. In Judges 2, 3, she pops up well before Mary was ever born. Why? Because she is not Mary, the earthly mother of Jesus. In Jeremiah 44, 17-19, God's servant is seen rebuking Israel for worshipping her. They ignored him. They took no notice of him. And they brought down destruction upon themselves, as will all Catholics that ignore this warning in this book. In Ephesus, the mother was known as Diana. She had a tower-shaped crown that represented the Tower of Babel. In Egypt, the predecessor to the Catholic worship of Mary, she was known as Isis the mother of the baby Horus. These demon female gods worshipped since time began till they were all placed under one name by the Roman Catholic Church by the previous Roman Empire. She was a favourite person to worship in pagan Rome and when pagan Rome married into the church under Constantine in uh, 300 AD, all the demon gods came with them and they were all rolled into one, under one name. Mary the Immaculate Church
Church, I have a proposition for you today. I want you to take a proposition to the Catholic friends that you have and ask them, ask them these questions. If someone threw your candles in the garbage and burned your rosary and dumped your holy water out and killed your priest and then they burned your cathedral and threw your fermented liquor in the sink and took your Westcott and Hort RSV Bible and threw it in the furnace and if they took your mass and threw it in the ocean where would your religion be? Where would it be? Stop and think about it. All your idols and all your candles and all your beads and priests and coats and cardinals and Bibles and mass were gone. What would you have left? Now don't duck and, and, and shimmy around the question. Let me ask you something. What would you have left? Suppose someone took the cup permanently that you took your, your mass from and took away the host, the bread you eat. What would you have left? You believe that the liquor in the cup and the bread is Jesus Christ. Suppose someone calls that fermented liquor down the sink, pours it down the sink, throws the bread out the window and shoots the priest. Tell me something. What have you got left? You know what would be left? Absolutely nothing. You'd have no superstition to hold on to. You'd have no lies to hold on to. Let me tell you what you would have. You'd have nothing but a poor godless symbol and a leadership that is going to hell so fast that they're going to slide into hell like a greased pig on ball barons. But listen to me. Listen to me. If you burn my hymn book, I've got the songs memorized in my heart. I have a song in my heart that is burning, calling upon the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And if you burn my Bible, then it won't faze me, because I've got it written on my heart and hidden in my soul, that I might not sin against him that saved me. You can't kill my priest, church, because he's in heaven. If you burnt down my church building, I would worship God's spirit in truth and in spirit on the beach, on the street corner, on top of the mountains, or in my backyard. You can't burn my candles because I have none to burn. You can't destroy my rosary because I'm not interested in one. You can't break my images because I've already broken them. I don't have any and I don't want any. And if I had any, I'd hang them upside down on my dashboard. You can't, can't. You certainly can't take my cardinals because I can't have any. You can't kill my Pope because to me a Pope is just another wicked, wine-guzzling, whiskey-drinking, debaucherous, child molester person going to hell you can't take any of this away from me you can't take away my little Jesus statues and you can't take away my little Mary statues because I'm not ignorant and you're not going to take advantage of me and you can't steal my religion from me because my saviour is living in me the only way to stop me exposing you is to kill me which is exactly what the Roman Catholics have done to Bible believing Christians for over a thousand years and will start doing it again as soon as the tribulations happen and they start taking over you see someone can steal your religion because your religion is made of lies and demons and sinners it's made out of handle uh, candles and money and murder, murder and a lot of superstition. Your father will never be my father. Your the father will never be my father because my father is in heaven with his son at the right at his right side. Unlike you. He is who he claims he is. You see, he is the Rose of Sharon. He is the bright morning star. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the first and the last. He is the father of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He is the one that raised Jesus from the dead and he is the one that is coming again soon. Now you can keep believing your false idols. You can keep drinking your wine, believing it's the blood of Jesus. You can keep sitting before the part of the, the the priest each week who claims to call down Jesus from heaven every time he has mass. But it's not going to happen. There is one Jesus. There is only one leader to us, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Catholic Church, it's time to stop putting your trust in man. It's time to stop putting your trust in church. There is only one that you can trust and he is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's waiting for you. He's waiting for you to ditch Mary, to ditch the candles, to ditch the rosaries, to ditch all the other superstition that, that, that these priests and these popes have brought into you. 
and it's time to recognise that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords 